We're hopping right in. So we're currently waking up in the doctor's house. We had to take these pills in order to help ourselves out. Because our leg was really botched. 83 and sunny now. Looks like it's going to get to about, oh, 1, 101, oh boy, by late afternoon in Louisville. And 103 in E-Town. Not a cloud in sight, so get out those parasols. Haha. <laughs> Major accident just head of the Barstown exit. So if you're headed on work to... If you're heading to work on 31, you are late, my friend. <laughs> What's that? No, 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 no. We're back in time. We're back in time. This is the lady we worked for, I think. What, sugar? Eh, just a little. Forgot how you take your coffee. Uh, I'm tired. I don't sleep well. I heard you yelling. Bad dreams? We're up on a roof, Ira and I, and Charlie... Eating a light supper. I was drinking sweet tea, Charlie was reading, and we were surrounded by other houses closely packed. Huge sidewalks, it must have been a. Uh, what's that word? Subdivision. That's it, I'm sure. Below us, a group of people were gathered, standing quietly. A man was reading from a book. I asked Ira about the weather. Would it rain on Tuesday or when the sun set? Something like that. He wouldn't answer me. Uh, Charlie stood up and Ira told him to watch his step and then I remembered. I, I woke up before I could stop him. Probably was alone on that roof? I guess he was. He was so bright his teacher said, what's the word? Imaginative. That's it. How could I forget? It wasn't his fault. It wasn't anyone's fault, Conway. That's what we mean when we say it's... Tragedy. Sure. Well, uh... We have mail order delivery today. Might be a long drive. I hope the truck can hold up. <laughs> I kind of want to say the truck will outlive us all. <laughs> I hope you're right. I'm glad you'll keep it. Ira would have wanted you to have it. It's been running since Charlie was born. Ira took me to the hospital in that truck. So would you once. Oh, this is getting too eerie. So we hurt our knee and also fainted. When you fainted. My hero. So, uh, long drive? So, so, uh, long drive? Said they couldn't come in person. Maybe just a shut-in. I didn't recognize the address. The order is all... I'm sure we can fill it. Guess that'll be the last. I guess it will be. The last act of Lisette's Antique. So, uh, what's the word? Finale. Maybe. No, that's not the word. I just need to think a bit. More coffee or something. Or I've had too much. Getting harder. Yes, yes it is. Where are those boxes you said in the hallway? Those are Charlie's old books. Those are Charlie's old books. Oh. Thought we could look at them together. That sounds nice. Poor should be here soon. Will you wait with me? Sure, Liz. I'll wait with you. There's a traffic and weather on the fives. That's every 10 minutes brought to you by Consolidated Power Company. Fuckers, those are the ones that were trying to shut down Equus Oils. They were get, putting him on Select Brownout Plus. They were putting, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, I can't remember the uh, gas station owner's name. <laughs> they sent him an email that they were taking him from like something barely getting power select to brownout plus or something. It was freaking brutal. Anyway, 
Stick around for Old Kentucky Home with Kate, helping you turn your humble home into a mansion. After this, we're going to fade back into the present. She's going to disappear. going to be the doctor sitting there. No, for a fact, it's going to be the doctor sitting there. Yep, they're all there's all of our friends around us. Yep. Look at that. Is that a bone? Is that a what the heck is going on? Look at that. What the heck is wrong with his leg? Conway, dude, are you okay? Dr. Truman. That's only if you get a late payment or a follow-up visit. I think everything went well here enough that they'll only want a bill for... Ah, uh, he's awake. How do you feel, old man? All fixed up? Truman says you might feel a little bit misty coming out of it, so... I was dreaming. That's unlikely. Neuropinal TM is quite powerful. In fact, many patients report a sensation of lost time. You feel like you've lost time? I feel fine. Good. How's that leg? How's your leg feeling? Yeah, that's the important part. How much shifts his leg a bit in his chair, testing it? Well? Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, the screwed up line. It was the heat, the shingles were cracked in the sun and one of them slipped out from under his feet. Shingles? What are you talking about? Who slipped? Your thoughts and feelings are probably still a little nebulous from the Neuropinal TM. That's totally normal. It'll pass. I uh, wouldn't recommend driving, at least for another hour or two, regardless. I can drive. You should rest that clutch foot, Dr. Truman. Fix some co- You should rest that clutch foot, Doc. I read this line twice. Or I'll Ugh. You should rest that clutch foot. Dr. Truman, fix some coffee. I'm not tired. Let's talk about a few things you should be aware of. Recovery, rehabilitation, and side effects. Well, I'm used to a few side effects. There will be side effects neuro neuropinal TM mostly. The operation itself wasn't particularly remarkable. Typically we see daydreaming, deja vu, pensiveness, wag stages, wag states? A regular perception of time, about 15% of patients report a generalized sensation of lateness. Nothing to be alarmed about, just keep it in mind. Best thing you can do is keep it clean and free of debris. How often do I clean it? I'd say about once a month. If you find yourself unable to avoid overly dusty or moist environments, you'll want to clean it more often. And of course, have a doctor examine and recalibrate it every 12 months or so. It's like a robot leg, I guess. So, do you have any questions? Anything about the bill that didn't make sense? I don't mean to rush you, but I have an early fishing trip. Tell me about the payment plan and the bill. Ah, oh, yes, that's one of the uh, atypical clauses. I don't really have any control over the bill. Now that Consolidated Power Company bought my employer, they handle everything. Hmm. I'm starting to realize... Does he really? I didn't say- <laughs> I think that's a good one, Austin. I like that. You got a boner. <laughs> Sorry. Seriousness. Serious tone. Anyway. I'm starting to realize that Consolidated Power Company is like Consolidated Power as in all companies. Not just like a power company. It started out, like again, the first letter we got from them was them shut it, turning someone's power plant over. But you're seeing like more and more references to consolidated power taking over everything. So I think this is more of like an actual just umbrella company who kind of has taken over the whole world pretty much. Anyway. It all runs through your electricity bill now. You can just pay it back full in your next billing cycle or you can get an energy credit payment plan. You have to call con interesting. You have to call consolidated for more detail about that. I don't really understand how it works. Something about generating electricity to send back to the into the grid? Thanks for your help. Julian's outside. We can head back to your truck. So I'm just going to pause for a second before we continue here. Let me go ahead and take us in the first person view.
I want to point out another parallel between the stories so far in the past. Um, when we were watching Doolittle's play, there was a portion that talked about the whiskey that they were drinking, right? They were drinking uh, whiskey and they were talking about how it's a celebration, it's a celebration. When we were in the Bureau of Recla Reclaimed Spaces inside of the Zero, we had that one, you know, when we were inside that Bureau, they were mentioning how they've got a big shipment of whiskey and that it was a celebration and they couldn't talk about what it was for. It just seems very interesting. We have the whiskey going everywhere. They talked about the the uh, crash on 65 that was full of bottles. Again, I implied that that's probably us being dead, but at the same time, it could very well be you know something related to these whiskey bottles. It seems like there's a lot going on with the whiskey distribution, the uh, whiskey company, the one that they were mentioning. I forget what the name was, the Hard Times or something like that, and these consolidated power. They seem like the two major key players here right now, and they're the most concerning people for me. Anyway, let's get back to the game. Okay, so I think we're good now. We'll be standing up here soon. Excuse me. Act 3, scene 1. Hmm. So we must have flown the house back. How we got here in the first place is Urza was riding his giant bird and flew us basically out to this forest. He must have flown us back. Um, we have now options to talk to a couple of people. I want to start by talking to Bloom. Actually, you know what? We'll do Shannon first. Shannon first. How are the drugs treating you? Three lights seem a bit brighter. Uh, like the rails and tracers? Something like that. What do you mean? Uh, never mind. Your pupils are probably just dilated or something. My dad got hold of these eye drops once. They stimulate the muscles in your eyeball and dilate the pupils. I guess they have some medical use, but one of the other miners said they help him see in the dark. But then he had to wear sunglasses all day. The drops lasted too long. <laughs> My folks had a peculiar relationship with medicine. We almost never had a regular doctor or health insurance or anything like that. Our immigration stuff was a mess for most of my childhood. We only qualified for state programs in small patches before something or other would get contested. And then we learned uh sorry and we learned to pile on dentist appointments and stuff in those short windows. Hmm. We had a cut if a cut got infected or her migraines were too much to handle. Mom would just talk to so-and-so who knew so-and-so, usually another minor, and end up with some pills. And instead of medical advice, every pill came with a gossipy, anecdotal warnings and superstitions, like all this lore that came with it. I don't like how lore is highlighted. It concerns me. Like magic. Dangerous. Mysterious. Your folks couldn't help? Yeah, they had pretty good health care through the university for a while there. A couple of times they'd swing something so I got a bit of whatever we whatever Weaver needed. In high school, Weaver got these pills to help her focus. She was so smart, but always going off in different directions, mind racing, like five conversations going on her head at once, and you're lucky if even one of them is still in the room. <laughs> still with someone in the room, you know? But she had these pills and they seemed to help. I was struggling in school too, failing my history class, so she offered to share the pills. Sounds dangerous. Yeah, it seemed pretty harmless at first. I guess that's why I kept going with it. One day I was sitting on my bed, my notebook was open next to me on top of a textbook, and I was holding a pen in my hand. I remembered this moment from several years before, and it came up so suddenly with such precision, I couldn't put it out of my mind. I felt I had to stay with it until I recalled the whole thing perfectly. It was just a tiny nothing moment. My mom patching up the side of a bird ca Birdcage. Birdcage. Okay, we have to stop again. So, in the Museum of Reclaimed Spaces, it has a bunch of little small like uh, places there apparently uh, important to the characters. It doesn't imply that, it doesn't say that, but they're all moments that seem to, you know, be valued to the characters. For example, we happened to find Conway's house, which it didn't say it was Conway's house, but he went through every building, like every room of it, like he knew the, knew the whole place. Or it might have been uh, Ira's. But then, the birdcage. 
dude, we just got a good piece of a juicy piece of information here. The birdcage, uh, when we got inside of the museum and there was kind of a pedestal holding this birdcage, she rubbed the side of it and like kind of tenderly touched it. So I'm really excited to read this little bit, little bit more of this. Um, it was just a tiny nothing moment. My mom patching up the side of a birdcage, winding some spare wire around the frame to reinforce it. I was just fixated on that image and that sound. The cage kind of bending and twanging as she worked on it. Wrapping and nodding, scraping copper against paint like a bow and a violin with a railroad tie. Really cool. That's really cool imagery, especially because of the fact that her parents were miners. So throwing in the railroad tie, you know, for the bowing of it. Pretty cool. My parents came back from a triple shift and found me still sitting there on the edge of the bed, pen in hand, delirious with thirst, patching that birdcage with a thousand yard stare. Wow. Blue. Guess the rain stopped. Hope there's nothing in the roads. Could be dangerous. Better drive slowly. Alright. Let's walk around here and see if there's anything else for us to see in this parking lot. We move a lot faster. Look at us. Zoom. See where goes play with Ursa. There he goes. <laughs> we are zooming now, boys. See me now, Mr. Krabs? I think that's why they gave us some space so we could run around a little bit. But I want to see if there's anything else to see. My own reflection, that's cool. Wait, hold up. Let me go back for a second. Okay, just, I'm just a shadow too. Okay. I was worried for a second that Ursa was a little bit different than me. What just happened? Oh, we switched off to Ursa. What is out this way? Cement truck? Where are we at? Oh, wait. Didn't we hear about Flora? Are those people like your new family? Oh, we talked to her uh, when we were going through the building the first time. Oh, we heard from her. She was getting interviewed by the people, like the mysterious uh, people running this museum of reclaimed spaces. Or whatever it was called. Sorry, I don't remember. Um, like your new family? <laughs> They're actually kind of weird. I know. Too bad it's not raining anymore. Make that boat. Pull it out of some paper from the front desk. How far do you think it'll go? We should stand here and watch it until it disappears over the horizon with a far off look in our eyes. <laughs> I'll lean my head on your shoulder, and right when it's a tiny speck, just before it vanishes, you'll say something romantic. Have to go with my friends now. Okay. <laughs> Peace out, Laura. <laughs> that might have been the wrong call, but uh, I kind of want to take Ursa with us. <laughs> nope. Peace out. I ain't no simp. <laughs> JK. <laughs> I just want to run around, get me back up with Conway, and here we go. That was cool. Right, let's head on back to the truck then. So, uh, what's the plan here? You just bite the eat. I want to try and see if we can get to that diner. Oh, okay. You've been on the road a while. Well, uh, there's an all-night convenience store not too far from here. 
That okay? Sounds good to me. Okay. We can take 31 headed east. It's right before 65. 31 headed east, right before 65. Okay. Cool. Get back in the truck. Let's head on out. We gotta take 31 headed east. Oh look, there's, look at him go. I love that bird. Anyway. Spires and dies. It's kind of like guys that carefully out the road next to a fallen tree. What the heck? Uh oh. Act three, scene two. Oh boy. Well, if the truck's gone, we're gonna be in some trouble. A tree. Fair enough. Oh boy. That seems like a mess. <laughs> Look at Urza just playing out on the tree covered in power lights. Bro, what are you doing? <laughs> I should call him back or something. I wish I could. Is there anything I can say to anybody? Is there anything for me to do? Is this just a tree? Is that is that what this is? Do I have to just be patient? Do I have to wait for something to happen? I, mean, I could just be patient for a little bit. Like, last time, last episode, we kind of just waited and watched up freaking meteorite land. I just realized I don't think I ever changed the stream title for you guys, did I? So it said I was going live with Fall Guys, didn't it? It did. That's unfortunate. I forgot to change the stream title. You know what? We're going to fix that real quick. Because I don't want to accidentally say that I was playing, uh, what is it called? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fall Guys this whole time when I'm definitely not playing Fall Guys. So, yikes, I forgot to change the stream title. Whoops. Rookie mistake, rookie mistake. Honestly, we can just leave it. I mean, it's already this way at this point. It's already gotten this far. Um, sorry, stream manager. Where's it at? I'm just going to wait and see. I'm just going to chill with this tree for a bit while we go. Edit here. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Well, anyways. I think we go ahead here. I think we just can go back to the truck. I don't think there's anything else left for us to do. Nothing to be done. Just won't start up again. Can you take a look at it? I guess I could poke around there, but I don't know a damn thing about engines. Wait. Is this why you always leave your truck running? Just superstitious. Right. Any other quirks I should know about? Never eat while walking. Well, I guess at your age. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you know this area? Anyone around here that could give us a hand? Looks like a road crew's... Looks like a road crew's been out here. Hey, uh, we should call someone. Do you know any good towing company?
I can't read the name and number on this flyer, but it looks like a picture of a tow truck. For the shot, I'll give him a call. Hopefully I can get a signal out here. Trans speaks into a large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Hi, hello. We got an old, uh, I want to say diesel old truck to stall out. Not a little confused. This is, you're a towing company, right? Your flyer is a picture of a tow truck on it. Open 23 hours a day? Weird. Notable accusatory, notable inquisitive, notable suspicious, inquisitive. Yeah, that's what I'm calling exactly, that's all. Notable apologetic, forceful, or obtuse. That's, uh, okay. Look, we need to get back on the road here, and I'm sure you're busy too. Thanks for the offer, but we really just just need a tow, that's all. Audible pragmatic and audible meticulous and audible neighborly. We uh we already ate. As soon as you can get out here, we're out sixty-five somewhere. Just kinda pulled up this tree it fell over. An audible place aiding specific tangential. Oh well uh, I don't know any of these people. Those people, but that does sound like the right area. You been over here before? Oh, uh, whatever you need to do, how long do you think you'll be? Distant traffic sounds. Hello? Excuse me. Are you bored? You're about on mine. Eh, not yet. Okay. You mean you look a little bored. Let's play a game. How about 20 questions? What would you like to play? What would you like to play? Um, the future with this little tree branch. It's pretty easy. We just break off all the little sticks in each section and count through the different things that could happen. Okay, what, we sh what should we ask? It should be about you. I can't do both the counting. Counting out and the questions. You know what's really cool about that? Either one would have been 20 questions. That's kind of cool. What kind of job will I have next? Doctor, lawyer, taxman, driver, driver. Okay, what else? How will I travel in the future? Ursa snaps the smaller branches away one at a time, counting out possibilities. Motorbike, motorboat, horseback, hearse, old truck, new truck, new truck. The other branches are too bare. Don't worry about it too much. It's just a bunch of sticks. Okay. How long do you think we'll be waiting here? Wish Julian wasn't busy right now. So we're talking to Blue right now, and these are just two Urza options. Wish Julian wasn't so busy right now. Got a lot of houses to carry still. Wish I could help more. I think they're on their way. I guess we'll still have some time to kill. We can look over the map again. Pretty gr grim place to be stuck. It's yeah, true. Wonder what happened to the tree, I mean. Maybe it was just old. 
know what used to happen to old trees out in the forest. Wildfire would come through and clear them all out. It made room for the new trees. But then people built houses and we can't have fires going all the time, so we kept putting them out. Now I have all these old trees choking up, choking out the saplings. That is true. This is actually very true. That's why we had controlled burns. Starving the young trees for resources, just cling on to life until snap. Oh, sorry. Starving the uh, young trees for resources, just clinging to life until snap. And then some road crew comes by and blasts the stump with dynamite. I think I just take a look at that radio of yours. Maybe I can get it going again. No point in just standing around. Okay. Cannon. That thing's been broken for years. So, we'll get to, we'll get to find out what your station you had tuned to when it went out. A snapshot of a younger man's taste. <laughs> Do you remember what it was? Some college station. Well, I'm sure we'll find something to listen to on the road. I do like our new yellow leg, it's kinda cool. Is this the right way? I don't recognize these trees. <gasps> it's Junebug! What's a recognize? Just a bunch of trees. Just the trees are so quiet, right? Usually you hear birds, a wind, a squirrel, or something. Turn your ears down, just turn your ears down and focus on the radio, cricket. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'm a little bored. I'll work on some chord progressions in my head for a while or something. <laughs> Is the kind of dragging a bit tonight? We've been stripped of our gear down pre- Oh. If only we had some trash to jettison. You know you'd miss me. <laughs> it's a good time to crash trash cricket. Oh ho, we should write a song about it. you for a solo guitar. Ha. <laughs> Maybe for an encore. Yeah. Hey yeah, didn't you play on this record? Go Go was on it. Is this Dee Dee's record? Um This is Go-Go was on it. Yeah, Go-Go. That's the guy out in control. So that guy is out of control. We should do a set with him. Yeah. Only Johnny plays the notes I like. Aww. What time is it? It's late. Harry's gonna flip out. That old man was born flipped. That old man was born flipped. I just hope we can scrape up some tips. Hard enough when you get there on time. Is this real? Bro, this is no way. This is actually the real thing from the from the play, right? I'll make sure Harry, Harry pays up. I have a way with him. I know. Join. It looked like you could use some help. You gonna fix up for them, Johnny? I don't know, like a, a wrench from a cattle prod. I thought maybe you could. I guess it's up to some good Samaritan. Okay, we'll help them. You're the best, and hey, maybe if they're not too busy, we can 
fill up some seats at the gig, you know. If no one's there, Harry will try and bite, let's say, bilk us for our... <laughs> goodness me, sorry. You're the best. And hey, maybe if they're not too busy, they can fill up some seats at the gig. You know if no one's there, Harry will try and bilk us for our fee. Okay, so we're heading back. Now we have more time to talk to Urzan Shannon. Maniacs. You okay? Sure, you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine. Thanks. They were in a hurry. Some folks are always in a hurry. Not you though, huh? You had caught up on a stranger's yarn or a streetlight reflected in a puddle. And nobody can get you moving again until you've left the grace of the moment right in your bones. Like a poet. Or a donkey. <laughs> I guess that's what I like about you, old man. You know how to wait. I don't think I ever will. Here we go. Here they come back. I'm glad we talked to her, actually. I really wanted to have a good conversation with her. You bug to Johnny, stay here. There's a careful, he's wicked with strangers. Heh, <laughs> you. You don't have to stop, we've got a tow coming. You here to clear the tree? You that cricket? We better get the chainsaw out. <laughs> Who paid to gas it up? That's not a good question. These folks seem to have a certain handle on the situation. So, uh... Won't the state cover that? Whoa, sure, something like that. Listen, we've got two questions for you folks. What kind of people do you take us for? I mean, how do we strike you? Or is that probably from space? Probably said you fell from heaven, ma'am. You invoked Johnny. Otherworldly. It's unmistakable. Now, here's another question for you. Do you like music? Do you like music? Um... So used to sing in the taverns. Of course you did. I love how I, I sat there and really considered the options, and she just cuts you off immediately. <laughs> Say, they should come over to our gig. What an idea. Well, we're waiting for a tow. Right now? Right now? Right now. Just head over there on this baby. Weird vector is soft and weird with the vicious cycle. Oh, vicious cycle. Hard, yes. That's what we call our bike. We call it the vicious cycle. I love how they're just like totally out of sync and it's, it's fantastic. Pretty tough, huh? We'd be very, we'd be very much obliged. See, we have a regular booking tonight and well, we're running late. Very late. That's why I told them. Now the man, old man who runs this venue, Harry Esperanza, is notorious with Holder, and if we don't get a few bodies in the crowd, well, he'll go all penny pinching on us. Just a short set, we only have one song prepared. You'll come to the gig, won't you? Of course we will. Of course they will! Can you believe we almost didn't stop? Blue. Hungry old lady? I think I've got a crust in the sidecar here. But Johnny here saw you folks were in trouble. Well, if it's all said and done, we stopped, and that's all that matters. Our gig's in an old tavern called the Lower Depths. It's over there by Old Charlie Morgan, Old Charlie Morgan Highway, just off of 65. We usually take a right off the interstate around the petting zoo. Johnny likes the petting zoo. I do like the petting zoo. Now, let's see about that truck of yours. I feel certain we can get it running. Alright, do your best. I'll tell you, you know. Take all the help we can get. Look at that. Charlie Warren Highway by the... Wait, where we need to go? Um... Over to 
over by Charlie Moore and Highway, just east off of 65. I think we could probably sneak over to that convenience store at some point. Well, let's go to their thing first. Over by Charlie Moore and Highway, just east off of 65. Take a right. Oh, sorry. Just east off of 65. Where is Charlie Moore and Highway? I see Fanzu. The pain zoo is closed. Damn. That's a tragedy. Oh, they went this way. Cool. Had a hard time figuring it out. <laughs> Act 3, scene 3. The lower depths. Oh, this is cool. This is this is the first time we've really seen a lot of actual color in this game. Like, outside, anyway. That's pretty neat. Ooh. I kind of liked it. I, I really like the vibe, so I'm going to say it feels a little like home. I know I should probably choose the more negative option to get a better response, but I'm going to say it feels a little like home, huh? I wish it didn't. Oh. Can't control your feelings, right? Damn. I feel that sometimes. I'll be in places and I'll be perfectly happy, but then one memory will hit you and it just kind of throws you off. I get that feeling. Well, let's head on in. Here's the bar door. Hi, Lee, you sure they're open? Junebug, sure they're open. This is one of those places. Give me a minute here. We are not saints, but we keep our appointment. How many How many people can we can boast as much? Wait. We're not saints, but we've kept our appointment. How many people can boast as much? That's lovely, ma'am. Who said it? A poet. Nice. I just want to see what's around. So there's nothing else around here for a sec. Dumpster. The trash bin is filled. Several pairs of working shoes, a few hats, a small Ziploc bag with three pairs of sunglasses. That's probably going to be important later. Well, let's head on in then. Ma'am, I hate to say it, but the cupboard is bare. I have some vision, Cricket. We've got one, two, four patrons. Harry doesn't count. Well, we've done more with less. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it, Austin. I appreciate it. It's sorry, by the way, I forgot to update the stream stuff. So, like, I had the wrong title in the wrong game for a bit there. Sorry about that. I think I got sorted out now. I couldn't change the title, but at least I get the stream figured out more. But, anyways. Let's see here. Well, the more with less. I haven't been in a bar like this since... I'm gonna go with that answer. I haven't been in a bar like this since... Give it up, huh? Well, I bet Harry has some coffee back there. I won't vouch for quality. He's a connoisseur. Johnny's favorite regional cuisine is gas station. <laughs> uh. A rough brick between two pieces of stale bread sits in the center of the table, surrounded by a ring of undisturbed dust. 
Ugh. Brick sandwiches! More brick sandwiches! Let's go! Anyway. I love how every sandwich is a brick. Have we seen actual food in this game yet? I don't know if I actually have. I really don't know if I've seen actual food yet. A bulky set of black goggles sits on the edge of the table next to an ashtray, a newspaper, and a few empty glasses. Huh? What is it? I guess, I don't know. Can you tell a horrible secret? I never wear eye protection in the shop. It's dangerous, I know, but I always looking back and forth to my oscilloscope to whatever I'm working on, and the scope has this peculiar kind of hard border glow that I just... Well, I never found a pair of goggles or glasses that doesn't smear out that glow. At best, the lens softens everything so you can't quite find the edges. That was neat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. For you. Anyway. Urza flips eagerly through the jukebox's catalog of songs. Shane, what do you think? I don't know how to play this game. Oh, buddy. <laughs> he really doesn't know much. Well, all I'm pouring tonight is Hard Times Whiskey. Oh, boy. Yeah, sure, I'll have whiskey. Coffee, right, old man? I'll have a Coke. No Coke, no coffee. Hard times whiskey. Eh, forget it. Harry Young towards the exit. Harry yelling towards the exit. Hey, shut the door, would you? I can't afford to run the AC all night. That was a really interesting noise. Sorry, Harry. Oh, it's you two. Where have you been? Never mind, listen. I can't keep this place open through the small hours of the night just waiting for musicians. It's lonely, doesn't it? It... yeah, kinda. Been like this all night? Everybody had to, um, clear out. Let's get set up, huh? There's nobody here to listen to it. I can't pay for... We brought some people, Harry. A crowd is forming. Yeah, also... Yeah, but also I... I say, couldn't you use a break, Harry? Been on my feet all day, but I, uh. I am noticing the fact that these guys are robots for the first time, and it kind of concerns me. How's it looking out there? How y'all feeling tonight? Harry. Can we get a bit more reverb on the monitors? Harry, just the soundboard behind the bar. How's that? Test, test. One, one, one. Three, fifty. Lamentation. Lamentation. Sounds good to me. How's everybody doing? Anybody had a real bad night? Ayo, I think all of us did over here. The Conway. How about you, old man? Yeah. Eh, not too bad. Well, we'll take care of that right now. <laughs> this is a song I heard in my tavern many years ago at an open mic night. Me and Giant were just riding around, you know? You like to drive around, old man? That's where I feel at home. Of course you do. <laughs> so we were riding out and we passed this gaudy old tavern. I mean, it was a real dive. Busted up facade. Weeds in the parking lot, taps all dry, bats in the bar room, and run by this creaky bag of bones. Looked like the only thing keeping him awake was the fear of death. So glad to be back here at the lower depths. Hey now. So we, st <laughs> so we stopped for an early drink and there was this lady singing right on here on stage. And the song she sang, well, it stuck with us. And now it's a regular part of our repertoire. Never got that old lady's name. She was like a sweet gal, and she had a voice like scotch whiskey. 
and we hope just to do her song justice. So here it is. Too late to love you. What is happening? When you left me, I never should have left. I never should have met you. Wish we met before. Wish we met before.
Wow. Have you noticed something, Austin? Sorry, by the way, I didn't sing along, but I kind of wanted to just listen to it and absorb it. Yeah, I picked that middle option because that's kind of stuff that I relate to. I know it would have been, if I would have picked, you know, like, all tops or all bottoms, it would be more of a consistent song, but I kind of wanted to hear that middle verse at the end. But, anyways. You notice something interesting here at the bar? If we walk over for a second? It's the same thing you talked about before about how the thing had the thing of making bricks. And you notice the jukebox sitting here to the left. And if we turned around, here is that table with where those guys were sitting. And then over here is the table where the two were talking. The uh, two parents or whatever. We're at this middle table here. And there's the TV that was in the background. It's the exact same bar. So as the play. So we're kind of living out the world from that play at the current moment. We got the ride that got the ride with Junebug, which is pretty cool. I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually talk to Junebug real quick first. Or should I talk to Harry first? Should let's talk to Harry real quick. I kinda wanna talk to Harry. It's if we don't get to talk to Junebug, that's fine. Well Harry, I think that went pretty well. I say the crowd was into it. Everential. Wrapped. I guess the usual fee is about right, and we'll let you get back to your business. Well, that's just, uh, damn it, I was trying to tell you to. I can't pay, they clean me out. I've got nothing left but GD IOU from the distillery. IOU? Yeah, I traded them some, traded them for some whiskey, and I guess they had some, oh, sorry. I traded them for some whiskey, and I guess I had some surplus credit, so I got this note to get some more from them later on. Must have been a hell of a trade. I had to. I gotta keep this place open somehow, goddammit. Watch your language, Harry. Did you pay them with your IOU? Well, I... This is a lie, probably. Very contemporary, very astute. How about it, Harry? Let's push some paper around. Well, it's just... I can collect on it here when they bring more whiskey up, but for you to cash in, you'd have to go down to, you know, down to the distillery, down the hard times, you know it's, you gotta take the zero. Mm, bend over, say no more, daddy. Ooh. Logan, you, you had to come in, in the middle, I'm almost done, Logan, and then we can get to the more fun stuff. We're almost done, but I gotta finish this, dude. Also, Venus, you're welcome. Anyway, we're almost there. But I have to say, we gotta go down to hard times. I actually think this could be a good place to stop. Because just a little bit further, we have to get everyone on the road. I have a gut feeling this is gonna be all of us connecting to the zero. That's what I'm saying! That's what I'm saying, he's, he's killing the vibe. Okay, he has to calm down a little bit. But... I think these guys are going to join us. I will time you out again, Logan. Logan, I will time you out. I'm actually not joking. I ask you one thing to chill out a little bit. Okay. I think we made it pretty far. You know I will, yeah. I think we're actually going to call it quits here because I'm probably going to have to redo this portion at least a little bit in order to continue because I should not, I'll just finish it out. I'll finish it out, but we might have to uh, cut around this a little bit. So. <laughs> we're, we're getting to Fall Guys then. I, I love the side Fall Guys. We're, we're getting to Fall Guys soon, Logan. We will. Give me a little bit longer, okay? A little bit longer, and we'll be switching over. Just let me finish out the final bit here of the stream. Or not of the stream, of this section, and then we'll head over to Fall Guys. Okay? We'll head over to more fun games. Or, you know, fun viewership-wise games. I know that, I hope you've been enjoying it, Austin, anyway. 
Gotta stay in. Okay. Just chill for a little bit, okay? Thank you. Okay. No. I have a gut feeling here that these guys are going to join up with us. And I'm glad you have us. I'm glad you've been enjoying. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be, they're probably going to be joining us because, you know, we know how to navigate the zero. And if they have to get, you know, cash out their IOU by taking the zero, we can have friends along the way, which is going to be pretty cool. That's what I think we're going to do. Got to take the zero. So that's what we'll do. How do we get there? Are you folks meant to head down there? I've never been myself, but I hear people hear things, rumors. They've talked a lot about rumors. That's where we gotta go. Well, I'll tell you then, the June bug. But this is it, right? We're square? Harry, you're alright. If only. You got a radio in your car? Yep. Well, here's what you got to do. Take a left out of the parking lot and just foot around here and dial until you hear something familiar, but... I mean, familiar but strange. You know the feeling? Like, I used to go hunt with my uncle out in the mountains, and now I watch these nature programs. Ugh, oh, gosh, not again. They're, f they're filmed in the mountains, and there's the deer and all the plants and every kind of tree, but something just doesn't look right. It's even stranger being so close to familiar. Something like that. You'll know it when you hear it. I love how it's like hinting the fact that this should be familiar to you. Like with the play and everything. It's like almost like this dialogue is meant to hint you've been here before. Except you were in 3D at the time. That's actually pretty cool. Like fix that strange but familiar station on your dial. Drive for a bit and turn around when the station cuts. I mean right then. Okay, this makes sense. When we navigated the zero, we would look for different uh, landmarks. For example, like a crystal, a barn, a something or another. And the moment you hit it, you turn around and go back. So this does make sense. It's basically trying to get into the zero, but in reality, quote unquote. Hope you folks find what you're looking for, eventually. Always a pleasure, Harry. But not like, is it? <laughs> cool. Okay. Wow, well, I think that's all we need. We've seen everything we need to see around this room, I think, anyway. Is there anything else we can do? I think once we finish up this act, I'm going to call it quits for now. We'll come back around, and we will. Uh, then we'll switch probably over to the party games. What's the current vibe? That's what we'll do. We've done pretty good. We've been streaming this for, what, hour 50? Wow, we have been going at it. So yeah, this is good. This will be a good place to call it quits and head over to some party games. Here. Anyway, okay, so the directions. The return of the zero. Tune the radio looking for a station that's familiar but strange. Drive for a while until the station cuts out then turn around. Okay, by the way, what I mentioned when I said that uh, when we were navigating the zero, this is... Wait, 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 what was that? By the way, just to make it... Oh, gosh, I keep messing up. Okay, we're good. This one. This one. Okay, so in this Bureau of Secret Tourism, this is how when we were navigating the zero, we had to do different directions. For example, here to get to the mineral springs, we had to drive counterclockwise to the feather, then come back to the Tawan, turn again, and there you are. To return to the Bureau, we had to find the feather and again turn around. But look, I want to just say this. We need to keep this number in mind. I don't know what this number's for or what we do with it, but we need to keep this number in mind because I have a feeling it'll be important later. Anyways, I owe you from the Hard Times Distillery. Oh, you know what? I think I have an idea, by the way. There's um this phone. I think, you know, we're supposed to think this is a phone number. Every time you turn around in the game, a number pops out. Maybe it's trying to have us do like a number like 270. We go 30, 15, 70, like, something like that. You know, we had to do a series of number turnarounds. And maybe that's supposed to be like a, a ultra secret location. Anyway, that's something to find out at another time. We need to get back on the zero. So, um, I already forgot. Okay, we literally just drive wherever we want. Okay.
I like this. Definitely weird though. Let's keep scanning. He said we know when we heard it. I like the station now. I like in the vibes. I don't think this is really what we're looking for either, but let's keep looking. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> I, I don't think it is, honestly. I don't think it is. I like it though. <laughs> this isn't what we're looking for either, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think this is it either. Charlie used to go to races sometimes. Charlie, he was your boss's kid, right? The one who, uh, yeah. Must be some memories there. Oh god, the poor kid. From what I understand, he fell through the roof. And he died. He was our boss's kids. Sorry, our boss's kid. That fits familiar but strange for me. And Harry said we just drive until it cuts out? What's going on? Oh my. Okay, this is a little bit weird. Top of Equus Oils! The, the horse on top of Equus Oils! That's exactly what that's the exact pose that it was doing. No way! Even Equus Oils was tied to this guy's background? Even Equus Oils was tied to Oh my gosh, to Conway's background. Oh my. Okay. So I think we go back this way. We're back on the zero for sure. Where the heck are we? The Hall of the Mountain King. What is this? What the heck is the Hall of the Mountain King? Is that where we were going? Act 3, scene 4. Apparently, this is where we're supposed to be. Okay. Um. Hall of the Mountain King. Oh boy, this is a little concerning. What? the heck are we? Um... Let's talk to Blue first. We always want to talk to Blue. Blue's the best. They don't keep the roads up too well, do they? Not down here. Who do you think is responsible? I don't know, man. I don't know who's responsible. I was hoping it would trigger another dialogue. The fact that these guys are all, all have like robot legs or robots themselves are a little bit concerning. Anyway, let's check out this bridge. The bridge ends abruptly, crumbling in disrepair. Yikes. Time to calm loose, ma'am. Now I'm having fun. Heh, <laughs> okay. Slow night anyway. Let's go to the boardwalk. So, what the heck is this place? Rope? 
Where are we? A loop of decayed rope is coiled on the banister. Whoops. Oh, Austin just sent a chat. What do you say? What's that turtle cake? <laughs> Gosh dang it, Austin. Okay, we're going we're going back we're going back to it, okay. Okay guys, I I I just have to show you. I know I was trying to be serious about this. I was trying to be focused on my game. But nothing can distract from the power of what Austin just sent me. Hans. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh boy. Nice. It is just what we needed. Anyway. A loop of decayed rope is coiled on the banister. Some rotted sections have been smoothed over with fine dust. <laughs> Interesting. Computers. So we, we've been talking a lot about computers during this. Broken computer monitors are heat precariously among the rocks. Fair enough. <laughs> I said Hans. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. A pet carrier. I don't like that this is on fire up here. This concerns me. A pet carrier for a small cat or dog has been left by the path. A calcified rag wadded in the corner may have once been a blanket. Oh, that's a shame. Well, up we go, I guess. Do to do, do to do, do to do. We're in a hurry, guys. Oh boy! I did not go back to the game. I hit the wrong button. Ah! I'm sorry, I tried! I hit the wrong button! Okay, you know what? Fine, we're going back down! We're going back down! We're going back down! Ah! Okay, sorry about that. We're going back down here. I don't know how far I was before I started doing that. Okay, here is the heap of broken computers. Here is the heap of broken computers. And up here is our pet carrier with the calcified rag in it. You good? You're all caught up? Here we go then. There's a backpack up here. Again, I don't like that everything's on fire up here. It concerns me a little bit. A hiking backpack leans against the rock. It's empty except for a dusty bag of cat food and a few punch cards. What were the significance of the punch cards? I'm trying to remember. Fire. There's this woman standing over here. What the heck is she doing? I just noticed her. How of disregard electronics burns steadily in the center of the chamber. What is she doing? Amy. Yeah. Who the heck is Amy? Oh, it's triangles within triangles down here. Shifting, intersecting, overlaying. Isn't that romantic? Let's see. And you're here to steal back the love of a boy you once knew. When you were too young to recognize the movements of the heart. And you're escorting her, pretending to have her interest at heart while really... Really, you're in love with the young woman as well. You've agreed to help him conspire to win her affections. But it's just a ploy to set him up for embarrassment and diminish him out of the picture. <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> well, maybe I still have the knack. I used to be really good at this. I had 11 Nobel's pro novels published, from the billionaire's bidding to fields of longing, real hot, bodice ripping stuff, you know. I miss those days in the Lexington studio apartment, just me and my thesaurus, steaming up the windows.
<laughs> I'm not sure you'd be listening to this kid. I'm not listening. <laughs> oh. But of course it couldn't last. You know, suddenly it was all computers everywhere you went. I thought I might be able to do something with that. Inject a little libido into those ugly beige boxes. <laughs> I went back to university and I studied human-computer interaction. And I picked up Donald's research assistant here as a tester, debugging. Oh, wait, 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 where's Donald? Where was Donald from? Hold up. Mmm, there was a Donald. There wasn't Donald who was important in this story. I think he was helping explore the caves, I think. I think that's where it was. There was like a discussion about caves. Donald, the name Donald is important, I know that. In my off hours, I played around with the doomed love story at the core of our little simulation. Amy was important too, I think. Wait, were these the people that we explored the... Oh, when we did, there was a intermission where we were in an art gallery looking at... Oh... At that one artist's work. I forget, it starts with an L. I'm trying to remember her name too. I think Laura, but I don't think that's right. I, th I think I have that name slightly wrong. But when we. She was briefly mentioned in the uh, play epilogue. She. Because she had a review of the play. But the. Um, in this section, there has to be a part of this where. I believe these are the people that were talking together, judging her work. Anyways, in my off hours, I played around with the doomed love story at the core of our little simulation. It seemed to amuse Donald, so I kept at it. I'm afraid I tinkered too much, made it too complex. Now our work is never done. We don't even have it to add any new functionality. The bugs just grow on their own. Too complex. I miss those old days in my Lexington studio apartment. Woman in tattered cargan looks furtively at the other people around the fire. Oh. There's an old man out there. Okay. Check this out. Yeah, sorry. I think the old man's behind my camera, but I think we should come into view. Yeah. Donald puffs on a smoldering pipe while half mumbling, half singing in an old country tune. Softly. Where the old green river runs through hills and caverns not known to us. Down to that sunless sea. Oh, who are you? What's that song? Oh, you've caught a verse of my absent-minded warbling. It's just a song from my youth. Something dear friend used to sing to herself as we hacked on crystal radios in the boiler room. The crystal. The crystal. Okay, we're, we're getting things together. It's still coming around. Okay. In old Kentucky, where my love, a lovely form did build for me. Sorry. In old Kentucky, where my love, a lovely home did build for me. And where the old green, and where the old green river runs, through hills and cave not known to us, down to that sunless sea. From there on, it's all meandering rivers and romantic greenery, and that is, that is what we were talking about. Wait. I'm out. We were talking a lot about moss greenery glowing and a bunch of stuff that we were finding in these caves. This is, this is all coming back to the caves. It's all coming back to the caves that we, were, we heard about in that epilogue, where they were exploring the caves together. What's that computer over there? It looks pretty vintage. Looks like a whole, like a harmless old computer, doesn't it? Like some old beat up mainframe exhumed from a university basement and left in this cave to rot or to flower? No, it's no ordinary computer. I've modified it extensively, and in some pretty experimental ways, believe you me. And that's to say nothing of the software, but... Shannon? You look like a technically, technically minded sort of person. Tell me, you know the effects of mold growth on diffuse base transistor circuitry? That sounds like it would short circuit. Certainly, certainly. But not all of it. Some moldy filaments are more or less conductive than others, and it grows in nonlinear chaotic patterns. We can guide it a bit through simple application of classical horticulture, but we can't produce specific results, only tendencies. The word and feeble we hammer in this derelict keyboard. My name is Reason, King of Kings. 
but we are more gardeners in the ruins. Our keystrokes echo off into the tunnels, boundless and bare. The caves stretch far away. We were too late, always too late. What? Did you say something? You're about to tell us about the software. Oh, the software, my life's work. Xandu. No, 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 no. Okay. I know it now. Donald, the the guy at the gas station, well, the guy at the gas station's name wasn't Donald. I, I'm trying to remember his name. I think his name was Joseph. Joseph, I believe. Donald emailed Joseph saying that we, he needed his help down in the caves and that I had finally found my Zandu. Zanadu, or whatever this word is. He would finally found it. That is crazy. So this guy is direct. That's how I know the name Donald. This is the email that came from Joseph, or went to Joseph. Oh, that was one of two emails he got. He got one from Consolidated Power, and he got one from Donald. This is, okay. Perhaps you read about it in a journal? It's been years since I published anything. Zandu has evolved significantly since I explained its data structures in my article. Library Multitudes. Hypertextual Narrative as Post-Structural Witness. Okay. Evolved and then deteriorated. Donald sighs dramatically and takes a huff puff from his pipe. I'm afraid you're too late. Fellow hypertext enthusiast. As the mold accumulated on the circuitry, Zandu blossomed for a moment into something holy and enchanted. And then all the charm was broken. You have any idea what it's like to spend your life building something and then have sit powerlessly as your work declines into ruin? <laughs> I like the not really. I'm not going to do not really, but I like that. My family disappeared. Enjoying me, don't know what to do. So wandering without the ones you give us purpose, like a ghost. Well, I have my own ghost. I keep them in there. In Xanadu. It's running on that glorious dusty machine. Take a look if you like. Too late to do anything but smoke and reminisce anyway. Far too late to do anything. Well, it looks like we need to interact with this computer. Let's talk to Andrew first. You know that when I first, no, I mean, if this cave were larger, could it? I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm, I got it. How do you characterize this space, the one we're standing in now? Seems endless. You have no idea how right you are. Decades of mapping and notating, but how can you tell? What formal quality makes it seem endless, you know? Shadows just seem to stretch forever. Sure, that's... But they're not just shadows, right? I mean, they could be. They're projections. Or maybe they're... Anatomies. Anatomies. How's that? How can you tell where we are now, surrounded by creeping... Anatomies? So, yeah, anatomies is what it was. Okay. Close your eyes. Will you close your eyes? Only if you close yours. Okay, okay. I can do it from memory. Good. Now... You're standing at the top of a rocky peak. The tongue of flame licks the, the shadowy anatomies of... Where are we? Oh, here again. How disappointing. <laughs> what are all these computers for? What are computers for? Computers? Oh, now I remember. I was writing on them. I described a cave. That was my job. Describe the cave. There's a great history of caves in the literature, don't you know? The walls are frozen rivers of orange stone. Isn't that vivid? I had a lot to live up to. I was a grad student studying statistics when I started working with the Donald I started working with Donald on his project. He said we needed someone with a more analytical mind to do descriptive writing. Someone who would appreciate the cave descriptions as real labor. Instead of taking their author authorial uh, author authorial voice for granted. Donald warned me it would be long hours of typing painstakingly detailed descriptions into the computer. And I've put in the hours, believe me. I put in the hours. 
I've described every facet of this cave in such detail that sometimes I don't know if I'm reading or looking, writing or exploring. Boring, <laughs> not exploiting. Often in the dark and lonely moments, I worry that I'm that in my sleep, I've transcribed rooms from my dreams into the system. How would we know? They can only be entered with precise, faithful detail. That's all I know how to write, and all I dream about is caves. I only dream of caves. Damn. Damn. What's this gate? A massive gate constructed out of scavenged materials blocks passage to the far end side of the spire. I think we're we've talked to Roberta, right? But I want to talk to Xanadu soon. I want to talk to all these people. The kingdom is in peril. Roberta laughs. Well, what else is new? Where's the kingdom? You're in the throne room. There are three legendary treasures hidden throughout the castle that will restore the ruins to their former glory. What do they look like? Messing with you, kid. Where to laughs? Enchanted jewelry. Talismans. A magic mirror that prevents the future. A magic shield that protects the bearer from age. A magic chest that's always filled with... I never went to university. I was an independent scholar. It means I took to the public libraries like a beachcomber. I studied fairy tales. And then I came to work for Donald. I paid the bills, rubbed leathering elbows with academics, scratched black mold from the cave walls. Finally, now I carry the firewood into senescence. Hmm. The kingdom is in peril. Okay, yeah, this person is not going to be helpful. We are going to... Let's look at let's look at it now. We get to see the computer. Baffling control panels are sheltered from the elements with a worn tarp. A closet-sized wall of knobs and wires looms behind the machine, humming faintly. An electric typewriter is the only easily recognizable component. Well, let's do it. How do you think we get it started? This is an old thing. Maybe there's a hand crank around? Oh, it has a run key. Here we go. Okay, guys, this is where we're going to cut it. Right here. I know this is a cliffhanger. I know. I know. Santa do. I think this is the perfect place to leave off for next time. Before we can do anything, I'm going to try and exit this game. Back to the circle. I think that is a good place to call it quits. Leave it on a cliffhanger. Next episode, we're going to actually find out what Xandu actually even does. And if it can give us any more information for how to possibly get to Dogwood Drive and complete our delivery. And how to help out our friends along the way. So, a lot of pieces are starting to come together. A lot of characters are starting to interconnect. It's interesting. I think we'll get there. But for now, I think it's time we switch back over. I will play tomorrow. I will play tomorrow. I promise, Austin. We'll continue.